This video is connected to the second issue of A Genealogy of Ideas, which is an e-publication series from the Center for Justice and Peacebuilding at Eastern Mennonite University. You can find the journals at the website on your screen. First of all, some background about Adam Curl, which can be found in more detail in issue one of the e-publications. Curl was working in the 1970s and 1980s, largely in uh, post-colonial contexts, and this model came out of his attempt to explain what he was doing and why it worked. Let's start with the basics of the model. This model is attempting to show different stages and what they look like and what factors influence the stage that the conflict is at. If you look at it, it looks like a general XY axis type of model and in the lower left hand corner is latent conflict and then next to that to the right is overt conflict and then above that is problem solving and kind of negotiation and then to the right of that is sustainable peace. It's very important to understand how Curl thought of these stages. He did not think that they came and went in some linear fashion. First you went through latent co conflict to overt to problem solving and solution. Latent conflict is when the problem is hidden and people can't see it, but the conflict is still there. And this is where Curl was really using concepts like structural violence or structural conflict and recognizing that a conflict doesn't have to be out in the open to exist. So he's saying it's hidden and that's why on the bottom his variable that he puts in is awareness, and he's saying lower awareness or higher awareness. As a conflict becomes more open and overt, and people can say, whoa, there's a conflict here, then um, awareness is higher. He said that you actually have to have higher awareness in order to negotiate or solve the problem. So you can't go from latent conflict straight to negotiation because you don't know who the parties are, what the issues are, what might be the best possible way to deal with it. So you need to make the conflict more open before you can begin problem solving. But that's not the only variable that affects how the problem solving goes. The other piece of it would be balanced and unbalanced. Now Curl only used the words unbalanced at the bottom and balanced at the top. Other people have said balanced what? When you read the original Curl, he talks about relationships. So he might have been talking about balanced and unbalanced relationships. Later, people, most notably John Paul Lederach, in his book Building Peace, added power. And a lot of people associate this with power. So you have either unbalanced power when the conflict is latent, when it's first becoming overt. If you want to problem solve, you somehow have to balance power and do some things that help that happen. And then another factor to look at on the, on the model is the issue of sustainable peace. Curl does not describe sustainable peace as static or kind of fixed. He describes it as dynamic. If you look at the, the language across the top of his model, it's called dynamic, right? Compare that with latent conflict where it was called static. And so he's saying that when these conflicts are latent and hidden, they could be very stuck and feel very stuck. And then in the middle, it's very, a lot of turmoil. And then there's dynamic. And that's because in sustainable peace, it's not that conflict goes away. It's that we have mechanisms for dealing with it and addressing it and the relationships are basically healthy, and the power is more balanced, and we're trying to sustain that. That is our sustainable peace. One of the reasons that I think the Curl model is popular with people who are trying to transform conflicts is that it is a model that helps us analyze, but it also points towards action. Um, so, for example, if you decide that a conflict or a problem you're working on is in the latent phase, and what you need to do is raise awareness, then you are able to think through what are some of the activities that would raise awareness, whose awareness are you trying to raise. One of the, 
the issues in this is that very often the low power parties are very aware that there's a problem. So if you take the issue of police violence against people of color or persons of color in the United States, then Black Lives Matter, very aware that there's a problem. Other people are becoming aware and also finding a problem with the way that's framed. And so there's tension over that. But you have a way of thinking about who's aware and who's not aware and how are they aware, and you can work with that. John Paul Lederach, in his book Building Peace, actually added activities and a list of activities to the bottom of the model to show what kinds of activities you can use in the different phases. Um, the other thing is, because it's not a linear model, it allows us to think about how is it that you're moving from one phase to the next, or from one set of activities to the next. And sometimes there's a tendency, people want to go, I see the conflict, let's do problem solving. And they don't value the overt stage of conflict, which doesn't have to be violent, but is necessary in order to identify who are all the parties that are affected by this, what are all the issues that we need to be looking at, and what exactly are the problems that we need to be solving. If you jump too fast from latent to problem solving, you don't do all of that process in between that sort of gives the conflict a shape that you can deal with, and we need to think about that. So sometimes you get these things that I call vicious spirals, where you try to go from one phase to another phase without any of the in-between work, and it collapses. So I've talked about latent to problem solving, but you can also go um, overt to problem solving ineffectively, and it, the agreement collapses and you go back to overt conflict. Or you may go, and it actually collapses back to latent conflict because people are depressed and they don't want to deal with it. On the other hand, there are spirals that you do want to build in, positive spirals. If you have a negotiated agreement and you want to sustain peace, you want to do the sustainable peace, you need to negotiate processes for coming back to the negotiation table when things don't go the way you thought they would, because they never do. So you uh, want to build in positive spirals. So it's an interesting model, and I hope that you'll play with it.